Welcome back to the Insane Asylum. This is your host, Asylum of the Initiative. So, you've decided you want to try being a space trucker. That's awesome. Join the club. So, this video, I am going to discuss hauling. Uh, and this is hauling professionally, not just hauling my ships to and from one system to the other. So, first, let's start out by talking about hauling ships. So pretty much every new hauler starts off with the T1 haulers. So to take a look at those, we go to ship, ship tree, and it's the bottom chain down here for the tech one hauler. So I prefer Galente hauling ships. And the reason I prefer Galente hauling ships is because I also get some specialized ships with this skill tree. So I get special ships for ore, for raw minerals, in addition to having pretty decent hauling ships in general. So these T1 ships come in a couple different varieties across the factions. Not all factions have these specialized ships, like Kaldari just has the two standard hauling ships. So one ship has a big cargo hold, but it has a weaker tank and is slower. And then the other one has a smaller cargo hold, but has a stronger tank and stronger to kill. Those are typically the ships I use when I'm doing T1 hauling. I'll use the ships with a smaller cargo hold, but they're tougher, and we'll talk about the reason why a little bit later. The only reason I would use these with a large cargo hold is if I'm just moving you know, some high volume, really cheap stuff like P0, PI, maybe P1, PI. I know if it's Tritanium or something, but there's better ships out there to haul Tritanium with and something like this. So. Uh, next up, every faction has two styles of Tech 2 hauling ships. They have a blockade runner. Let's take a look at the Galante, my favorite. They have the blockade runner, like the Viator, and they have a deep space transport, like the Akator. Typically, in high, sp in high sec hauling, you'll probably, if you're using a hauling ship, you're probably going to be using a deep space transport. The reason is, is because they can provide significant tank. They're hard to catch. They have innate warp core strength. That means that somebody has to get at least three points on you, three points or more on you, to stop you from warping. And they have to burn through all of your tank before the police, the Concord police, kill them. So it makes this a pretty solid ship to haul in high sec with, as far as the hauling ships go. Now the blockade runner is a special beast in that if given the chance in high sec, a ganker will blindly kill your blockade runner. So in general, this is probably the safest ship to use in high sec, but it has a tiny cargo hold compared to the deep space transport. You will also likely be kill on sight to many of the ganking squads because they are unable to scan your cargo holds. They just automatically assume you're holding something very valuable in a blockade runner. But blockade runners are extremely difficult to catch. And so some of the techniques, I'll talk about some of these techniques in detail a little bit later. So to keep yourself alive in high sec while you're hauling with these ships, the most important thing is to make sure that you are not worth killing. And you do that by a combination of maximizing the tank of your ship and minimizing the value of the cargo that you carry. When that ratio gets out of whack, then it is profitable for the gankers to kill you meaning you're going to drop more loot than it costs them in ships that they get blown up to kill you. So some other ways to make yourself more difficult to catch is if you're using a either a deep space transport, which does not have a covert ops cloak, or you're using any of these other T1 ships, having a micro warp drive and a cloak allows you to use the micro warp drive cloak trick to make you extremely difficult to catch. Because in any of these hauling ships, including the freighters and the jump freighters, the most dangerous times for you, if, if you're going to die, the most dangerous times for you, where you're most likely to die, is going to be either going into a gate, coming out of a gate, undocking from a station, or trying to dock in a station. Those are the four most dangerous time in a hauler's journey. So one, undocking from the station, going through a gate, getting off a gate once you're through it, and then docking up at your destination station. If you're going to die, it's going to be more than likely one of those four locations. 
So anything you can do to make you more survivable in those areas is going to be huge dividends to make you more survivable and not losing your contracts. So the way we do that with the T1 haulers and the deep space transport is by the micro work drive cloak trip. That helps you get off the gate as soon as possible. And as long as you're not autopiloting, getting through the gate should not be a problem. Now with the blockade runner, you have a covert ops cloak, so you don't need to have a micro warp drive to do a micro warp drive cloak trick for this ship. This ship can warp while cloaked, so all you have to do is align to where you want to go and then immediately turn on your covert ops cloak, and then you can warp wherever you need to. That makes this ship very safe in high sec, however, you probably are going to be kill on site, so you cannot afford to make a mistake. And uh, one of the common ways you'll see gankers counter these ships, especially on the low sec gates, if you try to take these through low sec, is they will drop carbon, like all kinds of carbon and, and cargo containers all around a gate. They'll surround a gate with super carrier fighters, and they'll just surround the gate with like small frigates and stuff. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to prevent you from activating your covert ops cloak. If anything is within 2,500 meters of you, when you try to cloak, it will fail on the cloak. So a lot of the times you see these ships die, especially in high sec or low sec, it was to one of those traps is how they died. So this is not necessarily a foolproof way to get through even high sec. Okay, so we're done with the Tech 2 haulers. Let's talk about the freighters. So you have two different types of freighters. You have T1 freighters, which have the largest cargo capacities in the game and have a moderate amount of tank. This is the go-to hauling ship of choice um, for high sec hauling. These have no business in low sec or null sec, with very rare exceptions. But if you're one of those exceptions, you will know it. And if you're watching this video, that is not you. So these ships should not be taken out of high sec. Don't even try to take this in to a low sec shortcut. Yes, it might save you 25 jumps, but you are 99% likely going to die attempting to do that. Um, a jump freighter is the primary hauling ships that null sec alliances use to get stuff through all the dangerous territory out to their null sec industrial hubs and their market hubs. These ships can hold significantly less cargo than a Tech 1 freighter. So like about half, less than half, maybe a third as much cargo will fit into a jump freighter. And once in high sec, a jump freighter just becomes like a super blingy freighter. Um, what makes a jump freighter special is it has a uh, jump drive. The jump drive allows them to skip multiple systems in one jump. They don't have to take gates. Because taking gates in null sec is what can make null sec very dangerous and almost 100% fatal in something like a freighter. But a jump freighter bypasses all that and can skip all those jump gates by going to another ship that they have called a Sino, Sino Serial Field uh, equipped ship, and then go straight to that and dock up in another station. So they are very safe in null sec. And then once you, you can't jump to anything in high sec. So once they're in high sec, they become just like a freighter that's worth, say, you know, like five times the ISK. Last time I checked, these were two billion ISK and these were ten billion ISK. So, and typically you carry a lot more value in these ships, in these jump freighters. Um, but they also are significantly more tanky than a regular freighter, about twice the tank. So about one third the cargo and maybe twice the tank for a jump freighter. But they're also cost about five times as much. And the skill, the skills required to fly these is much higher, much, much higher than a freighter. Okay, so those are hauling ships. Let's talk about some hauling skills. So in addition to in addition to the hull, the hull bonuses that you get, so take a look here at, let's just go to the Epithal, uh, Miasmus, Nereus here. Let's take a look at the Nereus. So you have the Galente Hauler skill bonuses. So this is very important because it gives you more cargo. This is this is pretty much free cargo capacity you're getting here by getting those skills. Is that Galente Hauler? Now you don't have to have that maxed out because that's actually quite a long train, and really you're not going to be flying these very much. And the most important of these hauling ships is the deep space transport. Now 
if you look at the bonuses for the deep space transport, there is no scale bonus to the uh, cargo capacity. But what you do have is a transport ship's bonus to the fleet hangar capacity. So the primary bonus of having a deep space transport is it has a massively sized fleet hangar that is m several times larger than just a regular cargo hold of any of these other T1 haulers. And you get a 5% bonus based on your transport ship skills for these. But having transport ships for is sufficient for 99% of the contracts you're going to be flying for these. Okay, so some other important skills that you're going to need will be navigation skills. These are really important. Like I said before, the most dangerous times in your life are going to be coming on and off these. And the thing that's going to help you the most with that is this invasive maneuvering skill. I would say, max this. if you want to haul professionally, get this maxed out as soon as possible because this will drastically reduce how long you are on a gate before leaving it. Now this is, this is uh, obsolete if you use a micro warp drive cloak trick because when you do a micro warp drive trick like that, then you're always going to warp in 10 seconds because that is the cycle time of a micro warp drive and you're using the micro warp drive to boost yourself into warp. But if you're on a freighter or a jump freighter, you cannot use a micro warp drive or a micro warp drive cloak trick to get off the gate. So just a stock freighter could take 45 seconds to a minute to align. So that's 45 seconds to a minute where you're just sitting on the gate and vulnerable to anyone that wants to scan you and kill you. So having this skill maxed out rapidly reduces that number to something much more manageable. Some other things is to make yourself the most difficult to kill as you possibly can. So you're going to do that with your shield tanking skills. There's my shield. Always kills me. You have your shield tanking skills and your armor tanking skills. So having mechanics maxed out is probably one of the most important things you can have. And hold upgrades is also very important. This will maximize your tank, so if someone does decide that they want to kill you, it's going to make it that much more difficult for them to do so. So this is one of the important skills that you want to have as a hauler. Okay, so I've picked up a courier contract to haul somebody's stuff, and I've plotted the route here. So I'm going to go pick something up in Kurama and bring it back to Jita. Now, I almost never use T1 haulers to haul stuff in high sec. I definitely do not use T1 haulers to haul other people's stuff on contract because I value their cargo and I want to make sure it gets delivered. So for 99.9% of all my high sec hauling, I'm going to use a freighter. So I always make sure that I'm not, I don't have stuff in my freighter that I forgot about. So yeah, my freighter is empty. I do like to, in my freighters, put a little supply room in there. So I just get a freight container that's very small. This is a thousand, thousand cubic meter supply room. But I have like extra modules for my ship in here so that I can swap them on the fly. So if I'm going to go through a dangerous system, then I can swap out some of my speed modules for some extra tank to make me much more unkillable. Or if the cargo is too big, then I can put a cargo expander on there. So I want to talk about some best practices. Typically, once you're hauling somebody's cargo, what you want to do is maximize the tank as much as possible. You do that with these reinforced bulkheads. So the first thing I do is I put the cargo in, and then I put on as many of these reinforced bulkheads as I can while I'll still fit the cargo. So what you'll notice here is as as these come online, or as I equip them, it, this is my effective hit points. This is how hard I am to kill. But as I add these, it's going to raise this at the expense of how much I can carry. So I can carry 522,000 cubic meters right now. But as I turn on the first one, that number goes down drastically. And every time I turn another one on, my hit points go up, and that number goes down. In general, I want to have as many of these as possible that will still fit the customer's cargo into my cargo hold. I'm not hauling anything right now, I just want to get there as fast as possible, so I'm going to take those off. Um, I'm not saying anyone's not going to gank me right now, 
because I have an empty cargo hold, but I'm just, they're much less inclined to do so. And I'm not going to touch these cargo holds, because if you put a cargo hold on, what that actually does is it massively lowers your hit points. It makes you much more easy to kill. So you should only ever use these if you absolutely have to, and then you use the bare minimum required to get it done, and you should There's never, already something in I repeat, you should never, I don't even know why I have three of these in here, you should never fly the three cargo expanders. That is gank bait, is what that is. It almost makes it guaranteed that you know, you're going to get ganked if you do that. So I don't even know why I have three in there, because you should never do that. Two is the most you should ever do. So the most you should ever take in one contract is that number right there. Put two cargo expanders in, see what that number is. That's the most you should ever. Now this is a high risk right here. This would be a high risk um, courier contract, because I have to have two cargo expanders, which massively reduces my hit points. It makes me much easier and much more lucrative to gank. So as you approach anything that's beyond your base cargo hold size, you should the hair should stand up on the back of your neck, and you should, you should take extra precautions as needed. So, but right now I'm just going to pick up my cargo thing. So I've found either three hyperspatial accelerators, or one inertial stabilizer and two hyperspatial accelerators to be the most effective at getting you to your destination the fastest. So if you want to go point A to point B and it's multiple jumps, typically this is the fastest that's going to get you there. I think technically having three hyperspatials is slightly faster, but I think that uh, having just this one inertial stabilizer, see this takes my align time from 40 seconds down to 32 seconds, which is pr pretty significant. So I like just having one of these off. Having one of these equipped just because it gets me off the gate that much faster. Okay, so again, I as a freighter, I cannot put a micro warp drive or cloak on this ship. So I am solely relying upon my tank and not carrying very expensive cargo in my cargo hold to protect me from getting ganked. But what that also means, if somebody wants to kill me, they're going to kill me and there's nothing I can do about it. Okay. So let's go pick up this contract. So if you've watched my previous videos, you know how important that is to have an instant undock. Well, I have an instant undock on this character. And I'm going to use it. Okay, so very important. This is my hauling, this is my hauling alt. He's a dedicated hauler. He's an NPC corporation, so he's unwar deckable. Some of these people that you see on the undock here, are people that have war that have declared war against a lot of other corporations and they just kill people that undock ships like this that they're at war with. So if you're at war, do not undock a hauling ship in high sec because you're going to die. Okay, so I use my instant undocked to safely get off the station from anyone who just might take random bot shots at me. Now you get to see the fun and joy that is moving a freighter through high sec. So since there's no micro warp drive or micro warp drive cloak trick, where I would normally be able to reduce my line time to 10 seconds just by pulsing my MWD, I have to wait the full 32 seconds right now to line out to my out state, to my out gate here. So some other things to really pay attention to is I did not accept this this hauling contract myself. This is very important, and I'll explain in a little bit. It's important that you have a different character that accepts courier contracts. That way, the customer does not know who is actually hauling their stuff. And how that works is I accept the courier contract on something I call a contract alt. And then I go to my personal assets, which is over here on the left side. You go to personal assets, and then I go to the station where the object is, and you don't have to be at the station to contract it over to somebody. You can just open it up here in your assets, create contract, and then you can contract it. So I did that on my contract all, and I contracted it over here to my hauling all. There's going to be a person that's going to actually haul this. So I just take a look around. I'm, I'm definitely I'm not being 
there's no threats here on the gate, but even if there were threats, there is likely nothing I could do about it, and if they wanted to kill me, they could kill me. But I have made myself not worth killing right now, because I'm not carrying any blingy cargo. Okay, so, we talked about the contract hall. So what this does is this protects the identity of who is hauling your cargo. And what you'll see happen, this is a common scam, it happens all the time, where when I accepted this contract, I had to give a significant amount of collateral. This, this collateral here in particular was one billion ISK. So I had to have one billion ISK in my wallet just to even accept this contract. And when I accepted this contract, I took that one billion ISK and put it into escrow. And now, if I do not deliver this package at the designated station within the designated time frame, then I forfeit my collateral and it goes to the person who issued this contract. Now, what some people will do is they will put a very high collateral on the contract and then they will see who accepts the contract because you can see who's accepted the contract. And then they will wait for you to undock from the station where they issued the contract and they will they can they can follow you to the destination and set up a trap for you. And that trap they will kill you. Warp drive active. So by using a contract alt, if they try to do that, they're never going to see my contract alt undock. And I am protected by anonymity. Where they don't know who's actually hauling that package. So now they don't know who to kill to go ahead and get that collateral. So, so that is protecting me as the hauler by doing that. Here's another thing to watch out for. Player-owned citadel. So you can see right here in my overview, this is a player-owned citadel. And you can see the arrow here. This arrow means that I have docking privileges. I have docking privileges at that citadel. But here's the thing. Another scam that people can run on you is they will issue a courier contract to the citadel that they control the access list to. And what they'll do is they will wait until the contract is accepted and then they will blacklist your character off of their docking list. This is another way how a contract alt protects you because typically they will just blacklist the person who accepted the contract. But if that person is not the one hauling it, then you should still be able to dock at that station. Another thing they can do, if that's what they're worried about, is they can blacklist everybody. They can just strip the entire docking list. And no one will be allowed to dock. Now what happens to you then is you've accepted the courier package, you've put your collateral, for this case it's one bill, you put your one bill in of collateral into escrow, you haul the package and you get to the destination and you cannot dock because they stripped you either you off that list because you did not use a contract alt or they blacklisted everybody off the list. And now you cannot deliver the package and they will leave you off until the time is up, which is usually a pretty short time for those scam contracts. And when that time is up, then they will receive the collateral and you will just have a package that is likely just one piece of carbon or something inside of it um, that's worth nothing. So that's another scam, and how the contract all can protect you from that scam. And also, being just being careful in general, when you accept a courier contract that goes to a player-owned st station, um, you know, a Citadel, I mean, in general, I personally never accept those contracts. Um, some of the professional hauling services will accept those contracts, but they also have agreements with the owners of those stations to make sure that Docking their couriers, requested. that their haulers, always have access to it. But you can lose billions. And if you go to LOSEC, you can lose the collateral and your ship. Because if you take a contract like that to LOSEC, and you go to one of those stations, then not only can you not dock and deliver the package, but they can kill you without losing any other ships. So that's a very common way for jump freighters to get lost. Okay, so let's pick up the package. Oh, I don't have enough size for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and this is why I bring the supply room. Okay, 
Okay, there we go. So we can see that the size of this package is just under what's required for me to have two, but not, not to have a third cargo expander. So my two cargo expanders. All right, so now what I mentioned before, this is a high risk courier that I'm doing right now because I'm having to use two cargo expanders. So I am, compared to coming down here, I am now, like if I would have over 500,000 EHP if I had three reinforced bulkheads on right now. But I don't. Instead, I have two cargo expanders. That's cut my hit points in half, which means anyone who wants to gank me will have to expend half of the ship. So I'm twice as lucrative now to gank. So I'm on the lookout for that. But again, if they catch me, there's really nothing I can do. I'm, I'm going to die. So. All right, so let's talk about some ways that we can mitigate that risk. So, and I mentioned this in the uh, one of my previous videos about how not to die needlessly in high sec. So, the easiest way is to scout yourself. That is to have a second Omega account, and you put a scout ship. You put that Omega account into a scout ship, and they stay one jump ahead of you as you go through these gates. And they're looking out for any suspicious group. So that is the the common ganking groups like Code or Novus Ordu, um, or you know Clipped, you know Hawk has got you know 30 accounts where, where he'll log in and, and kill people hauling stuff in high sec. So you find those you know who those people are by research and experience. You put them on a red list on your scout, and when your scout sees those red people in the system you're about to jump to, you don't jump into that system. Instead, just go dock back up in, the, in one of the NPC stations and maybe go eat a sandwich and then see if they hang around or if they leave. One of the other ways is the uh, Eve gate chat tool. And what this is going to look like is... Bringing this up here. Let me jump through this gate. Okay, so what that looks like is this. So I've put in my route, which I may want to Tama here. This is, this is a common uh, shortcut to get to Amar from Jita's through Tama. But uh, as you can see, it plots the route here. It shows you the system security status, the number of kills in that system in the past hour, and if any of those kills are at gates. So that lets you see if there's any gate camps that you're coming into, or how spicy the systems are that you're going into. So I can actually pull up where I'm coming from here. Okay, so this is the actual route I'm running. It's from Jita to Kurama and then back to Jita. And as you can see, it's all relatively safe. There's been no kills in the past hour. No kills at gates in the past hour. And this also allows you to see the dot line and Z kill board of any of these systems. But uh, I'm not worried right now. And I just came through these systems about two minutes ago. And I did not see anything that concerned me, so I'm pretty comfortable right now not running a scout in front of me. I've also made myself not very lucrative to kill, because the value of this contract versus how hard it would be for them to kill me is just, a, it does not pay off for them. They're likely to break even or even lose money I'm trying to do that. But again, with two cargo expanders and the value of this cargo, that is still a high-risk move. Getting to notice, I'm not using autopilot. If I was using, if I was triple tanked, so if I did have three or maybe even two reinforced bulkheads so that my tank was significantly high, and the value of the cargo I was holding, or really the value of the collateral I was holding, was low enough, then I would actually autopilot, and a auto, you could still die with autopiloting, but if you take certain precautionary measures, it can be relatively safe to autopilot, but if you want to do autopilot, right, the key is to make it not worth their time or risk 
to kill you by maximizing your tank and minimizing the value of the cargo that's in your hold. But since I am double cargo expanded right now, and I am hauling quite a bit of collateral, I am not using autopilot. And that's kind of a judgment call that you'll have to make what that risk versus reward is. And what is it you're going to do uh, while autopiloting? Like some people might go have a sandwich or, or work or you know, who knows what, and they can plug in an autopilot. And if they take those uh, those precautions, like I just discussed, then they can be relatively safe. But if I'm actually here active at the keyboard, it is much faster for me to just manually pilot my ship through these gates. Alright, so I'm now jumping into Jita. I hope this is informative and I hope this helped you out, kind of get started in the hauling and what to watch out for. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below. And I look forward to talking to you again. And until then, fly dangerous. Warp drive active.